Welcome back to the channel of Pro Ends of Vint, and uh, this is my thoughts on the official news now. So, the speculation yesterday seemed to be fake about him staying on for 2023. It's not the case anymore, as he's been officially sacked, and uh, Hasler is not going to be the man and coach anymore. He's basically been sacked by the club. Um, the club's told him that he's no part of, no, no, um, has no more position at the club anymore. He's no longer part of the man and the club, and uh, yeah, we're moving on to 2023. So, um. I will start by saying this. I was one of Des's harshest critics. I obviously didn't want Des to be a coach going forward because I had my reasons of uh, of why. Uh, why I personally thought that he shouldn't be the coach going forward. You can go and check my previous video about him, um, about my reasoning behind uh, behind myself not wanting Des to be our coach going forward. That's in my previous video. So go and check that if you haven't already. I want to see and you want to see my full thoughts because I'm not going to give it here. Um, and yeah, look, I just thought that, you know, really Des wasn't the answer going forward. I just didn't think that, you know, would benefit from the way he sees the game, how he coaches us, and what his tactics are worth in it these days, you know? Because I feel like the game's growing a bit, and um, I don't think Des has adapted to, to the best of those role, um, to those sort of um, structures in place for the game that's been right now. And, um, you know, I don't want to make it all negative because I do really love Des as the coach. I've always respected him, you know. I've pretty much grown up, you know, pretty much seeing him as our coach, you know? Um, but... Look, not everything stays the same forever. Not everything stays in the same shape or form. Not everything stays where it is forever. You know, it, that's pretty much life, unfortunately. I can understand where Manly fans are coming from when they say that they're upset with theirs going and they're really angry. They don't want to renew their memberships anymore. They don't want to, you know, watch the club, etc. I understand, okay? I understand, because Des is someone that everyone would love, and even I respect Des, even I, even even if I don't believe Des is our coach going forward, I still respect him highly, and I still hope he um, is doing okay, and I do hope that, you know, he gets picked up by another club in the future. Whether that's a head coaching role, an advisor role, he'll definitely get a, job, a gig somewhere, I hope, for his, for his sake, because he's too smart of a, of a you know, tactician and too smart of a, you know, sort of footy mind to be sitting on the sidelines, in my opinion. So he'll get picked up by someone somewhere else. But I just think for our sake, it's right we move on because I want to see the club succeed. I want to see this club grow and benefit from new changes, you know, new environment, stuff like that. And I just think the last couple of years that Des has been at Manly, he's done some great things for us. He's done some really good things. He's improved players and he's definitely taken us to many good heights in his uh, three years at the club, or basically four, technically. But, you know, we're, we're still very inconsistent as a club. You can put, you put that down the, uh, you, can, you can put that down to the players, of course, but it's the coach that's accountable at, at the end of the day, keeping these players to perform at their very best. So that's what I think there. But, you know, look, it's sad. And obviously, I was, you know, look, I was a little bit upset with how he got sacked because I thought that, you know, treating a, cl a club legend like this is a bit... Bit, it can be a bit wrong, but I think the change is necessary. I think it was necessary. Then. It had to happen. It was one way or the other, pretty much. Now, I'm going to reveal something, and, um, you know, if you can, I guess you can be mad if you want, or you can, I guess, be happy with how I came out as a fan and so, sort of said this to the owner. So, yesterday at 6 o'clock, when I heard the reports about Des staying at Manly and how he wanted to stay as, a, as head coach and work with Seabold going forward, you know, I was very upset by that. I was very angry because I thought that Des would only be staying for the money, which I still, to this day, I still I think that's I think that's the case, and I think my opinion will definitely stay on that one because I do believe he was only there for the money to see his contract and have a passion going forward for the club, and I think that yeah, it's not healthy having a coach that only cares about the pay going forward, in my opinion. So that that stays. So. Basically, I messaged Scott Penn, the owner. I searched on Google Scott Penn's uh, email as soon as he, the things came out that Des wanted to stay as head coach. I messaged Scott and I said to him, you know, I'm a passionate Manly fan. I always will be. Um, but things have to change and things have to go in a new direction because I think it's, you know, with Des staying as coach, I don't think it's the right right call. And I don't think that, you know, having him as a coach going forward is going to benefit us in any, any way. You know, Des he has hit his peak of success. I didn't, I didn't say this though. I didn't say that Des hit his peak of success, but he has, in my opinion. But yeah, look, what I mainly said to Scott Penn was that you know you won't be getting a new member um, to the club because I've never been a member before. It's always been my parents or other family members that have bought me a membership for the season. And as obviously I'm getting a bit older, I can purchase this sort of stuff, purchase memberships, purchase stuff like that, etc. And I was going to be a member for the first time before this whole Des thing came out about him, about him saying as head coach and. 
probably not being as passionate as what he was probably before saying anyway if he did but he's not and um yeah look i don't know if penn saw a message i don't know if he saw it or not but i do have a little feeling he did and uh if he did then I, I, I do thank Scott for, you know, seeing what I really thought, you know, personally. So, um, thanks, Penn, for seeing my message and seeing how I really felt about the whole situation. But it is sad, and obviously I, I'm not too too completely keen on, on, the, on the back room and board, but, you know, I've got to trust in these changes, and I've got to trust them going forward, and, you know, it's they're, they're the ones make, appointing these people, making these changes. So, um, yeah, look, it's, it is what it is, but, again... I think the change is necessary. I think that where we're going is good. I think Seabold's a guy having it back. I understand many fans are not too keen on him because of how he went with the Broncos in 2020 and etc. But I will say this. In 2018 at Souths, he changed the side single-handedly, in my opinion. He made Cody Walker a better player. Cody Walker wasn't the same player as he, as he was now back in 2017 16 before Seabold came in in 2018 made him the player he was right now. Same Damien Cook, got the running game out of Damien Cook and that running game from 2018 where Seabold pretty much implemented that into his game, pretty much made him a better player. And I think he improved the whole team and squad in general. I, th I really think he um, made that team stronger, uh, that whole club a lot better. And he got, basically got them from being a, a 12th to 11th team in 2016 and 2017 to being a third place team in 2018, taking them to the top four and being one game away from the grand final, which they went out to Roosters in the preliminary final there. So he's proven to do some good things before, and he's definitely proven that he um, has done a great job as a coach. He pretty much has made that left side, left hand side, which is obviously South's go to side, and silly from that day where Seabold was at the club. And yeah, you know, I was at a game a couple of years ago. Where Manly played South in 2018, and that's when Seabold was a coach. And um, I remember to speaking to my dad at the time, and we were talking about how dominant this left side is of uh, Rabbitohs and how it's, you know, all of a sudden become this really prominent edge they go, they go to, and. Uh, yeah, look, it's um, an edge. It's an edge they still go to today, and obviously, Seabold, I believe, is sort of the factor behind that. And um, yeah, it's pretty much worked ever since um, Seabold's come in, and ever since Wayne's been the coach, and still when Dimitri's been the coach. But as for his Broncos tenure, yeah, twenty nineteen was a good year um, for them. Some inconsistent moments there, but still got them to the finals until week one, where it was really, really bad. But I think you have to blame that more than players and more than anything else. That's that's their decision at the end. At the end of the day, to sort of go out and go to the pokies before a game um, the next day, and um, that's really their fault because they've made a poor decision. That's not Seabold controlling the players, go to the pokies and do whatever. That's more the players' fault in the first place. So you got to really think about that too. Um, but twenty twenty, that was a tough year. That was a tough year, and obviously Seabold did make some mistakes. And he did definitely do some things wrong. I thought. At, at the time, I definitely thought he was doing the wrong things there. But I I know that it wasn't all his fault though, because at the end of the day, he's a coach, and at the end of the day, he's not the ones uh, he's not the one that really controls everything that goes on with the club. Because he's the coach, he's supposed to get the best out of the players, and he's supposed to, you know, manage the team and manage how they play, etc. And I don't think he had the, the full support of the Broncos board at the time during twenty twenty, because they were all Wayne's people, Wayne Burns friends and mates, etc. So, you know. I do think Seba was, was a little bit unfairly treated for the, the Broncos' dismissal. But, yeah, it was a poor year, and I think that Seba saying as a, as, as a coach for, you know, another couple of years at Broncos wasn't the right thing. So, probably best they had that breakup in the end. But, look, um, but now, you know, obviously from being a former Seahawks coach to, to a former Broncos coach now to being the current Manly coach, that's to be confirmed soon. I'm looking forward to seeing what Seabs can bring to this club. I think Seabold's going to do a good job. Um, as a Manly fan, I'll back him, and I hope more Manly fans do, because I know it's tough to really back someone with a a poor last season they had in the NRL as a head coach, but you know, at the end of the day, we've got to sort of just show us a poor and back him for, I guess, giving this club, giving this you know job a go, because it's a tough job, and I have no doubt that he would have probably worked himself and worked on um, how he could have approached things last time at the Broncos and I'm pretty sure that you know he's ready to coach again and I'm, I'm backing Seabold I think he'll do a good job for us I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes but as for Des I'm sorry about how things have ended Des but I do think reality kicks in here and I do think that you know your time was definitely coming to an end at some point but in saying that I think he has a lot to offer in the, in the NRL still whether that's at another club or somewhere else but 
Anyway, everyone, that's the news for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, comment your thoughts on this house of sack. Was, right, was it the right coin in your opinion or was it the wrong coin in your opinion? Let me know in the comment section down below. But um, until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.